Hello everyone, in the last episode we've briefly learned about WoW Machinima and their styles. For this part of the series, I will guide you into the creation of a green screen Machinima and goes over 3D animation in the second part and then some advanced tips and tricks for the third part. In this episode, we'll first, we will first set up our World of Warcraft for an optimal background recording. And as you can see, I've logged into World of Warcraft and currently in Stormwind because the machinima that I'm going to make needs a Stormwind background. This is a retail server. If you want to learn more about RP Evan, I'll link on tutorials of that in the description. So, what I meant by setting up your WoW for optimal background recording is to keep your frame rates as high as possible while keeping the good looks. So, yeah, it's kind of like uh, a good background and stable, good and stable background. So, we just need to go to the settings around here and usually I'll just crank this up to the maximum and the frame rate will obviously drop like a lot then I'll go to each one of the settings and disable what you kinda don't need yeah. so first of all particle density and depth effect which are both connected to particles is not something we really need for a background like um, well why would you need it since usually for backgrounds it's it includes stuff that you don't really need to see so you can actually reduce small details like this, so I'm just going to turn both of this off. Now, of course that didn't help a lot because there's not much particles around here. So, outline mode is when you try to select an NPC or something, and you can see like they are outlined in them. You also don't need this. And then sun shafts, so for those of you like I think you are quite familiar with lens flare or something. You know like how those little um what you call it like lights or something, it's usually when you look directly into the sun and then it kind of creates like a burst of lights and if you want it like if you are trying to record a sun maybe you can turn this on but it's not really that necessary and sometimes it actually uh, disturbs your background during the compositing it makes your lighting a bit harder to do so I just disable this And then for liquids, usually you don't really need up to ultra. Like, I think good is usually good enough. It's already good enough. Or if you don't really need like liquids on your background, you can just turn it all the way low. And it's not really that bad. I mean, you can still use it as a background recording. But yeah, this let me use either fair or good. And as you can see like the frame rate is already improving like little by little. And then for shadows I think high is good enough like shadows and SSAO is quite important for your background rendering so shadow is basically like the shadow of your character like this shadow and stuff and SSAO which stands for screen something 
ambient occlusion. For those of you that who doesn't know ambient occlusion, it's basically like a little shadows in the cavities. Um, I don't really know where to show it. Maybe if I disable this, you can see a bit of difference. Like, yeah, you can take a look at somewhere on that. This is disable, and if I set it to ultra, the shadow is added. So it's quite important, but you don't really need up to ultra. Like, it's not even that visible from the distance. Like, good is already good enough. Shadow quality also high. Like, you don't really need something way too blurry because usually we can blur things inside your compositing software. And that's about it from this part. Then we go to texture resolution. Uh, always keep this high if, I, if you ask me. Of course, if you want to keep it low, like, well, I, I don't really recommend it because it's quite important. Yes, it doesn't really, it doesn't just affect what you see in the far. Yeah, it's kind of take some time. It doesn't really have much of a difference. Maybe if you see at the lion, it's a bit different. But I always try to keep it high because sometimes like close objects will be able to be seen by people. For texture filtering, for those of you who don't know, like if I take a look at this, um, I want you to keep attention on this one. So I put it to build in here, it gets blurred, like the texture is messed up and it usually affects objects on the way background and seen from an angle. So you can always keep this low, it's not really that it's not really that important. It would be um if I turn this uh, again, like you can see, it's a bit sharp around here. But you can keep this low, it's not a really important thing. And projected textures is usually when you see a spell effects, and then for example, an AoE, like there's a indicator like, oh, the AoE is over here or something, and it will create like a bit of spell effects. You can just disable this. Don't need it now. Before we go, before I go to the environment, I want to take a look at anti aliasing first. So, what anti aliasing see is like if you see around here, like you can see that it's a bit of jack, like jack X, jacket edges. Now, what anti aliasing does, it's kind of blur things somewhere around here. If I put the uh, MSAA, like you can see it kind of becomes soft. But MSAA like eight times is just way too much. Like usually FXAA high is already you can see like it doesn't really that different. Maybe around this part it's not as soft as MSAA. Oops. Hold on. It's first added. Okay, so back to NTLA thing. Like if I set it to MSAA, you can see from this part it looks really smooth. But if you ask me, if XAA is already good enough, or if you if you have a bit of better computer, you can try CMAA. It's not really that different, but it helps. Because MSAA, what it does, it's like... It's quite similar to resolution scale. So, it renders your scene in a larger... 
um, resolution and then scale it accordingly to your computer and it's really demanding on your graphic card vertical sync it, usually I think it's you can enable this it's basically if you don't know what screen tiering is it's like having two frames on top of each other and there's those like a card or something uh, it's kind of hard to show and to explain if you go to ex good fans like there's MSAA like you can ignore this setting if you don't use MSAA here triple buffering uh, I usually enable this because frame rate spikes is quite dangerous for background recording uh, multi sample alpha test you can disable this this is kind of related to MSAA and then pulse process anti-aliasing it's like doubling your anti-aliasing so it's not really that important you can leave it off resample quality is for if you want to adjust the resolution scale and for example I set it really high like the frame rate's gonna drop like a lot everything will look better and something and I can also set it to very low and things get blurry and resample is basically helping it so that it's not really this jagged like you can see it's a bit blurry if I put on by cubic but if you're staying at your 100 resolution you can leave it to none for the graphics EP um, usually okay so if you use DirectX 12 your fraps is going to stop working like fraps doesn't really support it by DirectX 12 so I need to reduce it to DirectX 11 but yeah, Direct S12 is obviously better. If you're not using fraps, you can just use it. Players interactions, it's not going to trigger or anything, so you can actually leave it to none or whatever you do. Graphic cards, yeah, just something like that. Contrast, brightness, and gamma, I recommend leaving it right there. Okay, so wait, let me apply this. So, what's going to be important is the environment so first of all like this is a very important thing for environment always keep ground clutter to zero or yeah it's not actually you can actually choose zero like one because what ground clutter does if I put this one to zero it removes these grasses and why is it important like okay um, like for example I want to take a scene from here like let me just zoom in something like this and if I have the ground clutter like a lot and you were to put a green screen on top of it you key out the green and put it on top of it your character will look like he's floating on top of grass because no matter what you do like you can't you can't possibly mess out every single of this it's way too tedious like I don't think anyone ever tried it so you always need to keep it the lowest value so that your character on your green screen when you put it on top of the background is actually standing on the land instead floating above a grass yeah it's something like that environment detail is for example like you can see some statues over there if I lower my environment detail to 1 mm, wait it doesn't really work with statues I guess uh, let me see 
Okay, so I'm going to turn the gamma a bit because it's a bit too dark. So, for example, like you can see it's empty with environment detail 1. If I put it up, you can see the lanterns from above, from far away. Now, how much should you set this? I guess don't set it to the very lowest. Like, you still want to see some objects from distance, but you don't really need up to 10. Like, maybe 4 or 3 is a little bit. It's already good enough. Few distance is. Let me show you. If I apply this, and you can see. Wait. Yeah, like it's, you can see the difference. So I put it low, you can see that it's hidden by the font. If I put it on high, you can still see the object. Now it's important, like, font is a really important thing inside a green screen. Like, you will need font. So, set it low. Like, no need to be like very low. Yeah, maybe three or something, or yeah, I think we can go for two because we're going to need some fox around here, especially for the color grading or color correction, and yeah, that's about it. You can see like the frame rate has improved quite a lot well you can still get a good background shot of what you want and well that's about it I'm just going to return the gamma to one and end this video so thank you very much for those who've listened this far and I'll see you in the next episode we'll be talking about wow model viewer all the hidden features in it, how to use it properly, and stuff like that. And yep, thank you very much for watching. Leave a like, and don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next episode.